I'm hanging in here like a dirty shirt. <laughs> so you, had a, you had a little bit of a late one? Well, uh, man, uh, I played football 100 years ago, and uh, my football coach passed away. So we had his funeral. Oh. So I got to see a bunch of old buddies I hadn't seen since high school. And then uh, uh, today's my grandboy's last uh, baseball game. So that's going on at, actually here in just a little bit. And trying to, and then I have an audition, a pretty important thing going on uh, tomorrow in Jackson between 10 and 2 to try to narrate uh, some things. So I'm trying to do this like Morgan Freeman, uh, kind of using my voice. Uh, thank you. And uh, but anyway, so that's that's this will be my first time to ever try to do something, and I needed to get some clothes. So it's just been, you know, no country boy like me trying to find something that fits you is, is you know, <laughs> around the belly and and a uh, little around and the legs. Well, it's like Daddy said, look like two uh, toothpicks and a maypop. That's right. <laughs> you man, you're busier than a one armed paper hanger. My goodness. Yeah, so uh, tomorrow I go down and do that from 10 to 2, and then tomorrow night play at the Care Project in uh, Charleston, and then Saturday a 70-year-old fan of mine, her birthday party in Duck Hill, Mississippi, and then Sunday at Reds. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm st it, it's been a blessing since uh, since it's kind of opening up down here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all waiting, and, and, uh, and hearing it is, and that's pretty cool, so. Yeah. So, so what you going to do, man? I hate... I can't, I can't go away from this. Uh, Big Jack Johnson gave you your, your name. Yeah, he did. Oh gosh. Right here at my house. You know, he come back from uh, the Chicago blues festival and uh, he was, he wanted to see my pigs and uh, he knew I raised hogs and everything. And I talked about giving him one and he come by here and I saw the van go across my old front yard. And I'm like, who is that? You know, I wasn't expecting him. And um, so he, they pulled straight on up to the hog pen, you know, and I'm like, it's got to be Jack. And <laughs> I got up there, slipped my boots on and walked up there. And, and of course, when I got there, he went to going <sighs> like this sniffing in. And I'm like, you know, and his nostrils were pretty good size. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? The stitch would knock you down. And he said, it brings back old memories. Uh -huh. And the smell of that hog manure and I said, he said, you a lucky man. I said, well, I don't know about that. My wife don't think I'm too lucky. She don't think <laughs> she's lucky when the wind gets out of the wrong direction, you know? So <laughs> anyway, uh, we were talking and I had my mules walking around my house like I always do. And, and, uh, I said, you know, they, I don't have a blues name. And, and I said, they wanted to call me the, somebody blind Mississippi Moore said, you ought to be the Duke of Clarksdale, Mark. I said, I don't even know what the Duke is, big Jack. And he said, I said, and a mule walked up about it, with the rub his head. And I said, why can't I be called a mule man? I said, I've raised mules my whole life and bought and traded them all my life. And, I, and he said, he looked at me and he just said, that's going to be your name. That's all I'm going to call you from here on out. Uh, and that's, that's the way it went. Story. And then it read packed house. And he stops as I walk across the, the place leaving. And he said, hey, everybody. And everybody stopped. And he said, that's mule man. And that was the step. So, yeah, I'm very... Very glad that uh, he gave it to me. What an honor. So, so you do a lot of farming? I do some farming. Yeah, I do a little bit. And, and a big truck patch. Large truck repair or towing? I do. I pull cars out of ditches. That's very exciting. <laughs> it's it's but, needed most but, of the time. But, you know, if you got the jaws of life that can't get you out, you'll be glad to see me coming because I pull them cables and get, get it off of you. They, so, they love to see you coming. It's just a dangerous deal, and, you know, and I don't like what I have to see sometimes, you know, but uh, that uh, it's bad, especially when a child's involved. And, uh, but, you know, uh, there's a song about that, you know, it's going to be coming. It's more, I hear it as a bluegrass song, but uh, but it's, uh, anybody that's heard it, it just sits their hair up on the end. I said, man, that is, it's about a record driver, you know, because uh, you never, you know, it says on a cold, dark night, I was called to a scene where there was whiskey and blood on the street. And, um, and the policeman there said, they're both dead. So no need to be in a hurry, my friend, me being, you don't know who I am, but I'm the record driver. And I said, as I turned away and I, I thought to myself, that could have been me, Lord, six feet in the ground. And then as I heard mama's crying and I heard amazing grace and, uh, 
I never will forget the look that I saw on his face, you know, and it just goes on from there. It's, it's pretty, pretty sad, but it's a true thing. Come to find out this kid was burnt, burnt up in the car and um, we didn't know who he was. And come to find out it was my niece had brought him to one of our family get togethers. And uh, so then that's when it hit home, you know, and um, I, I was praying because I said, you know, what, what happened, you know, and uh, he had left a party and he was a Christian kid. And I just prayed to God. I said, what happened? And then uh, it says, uh, the, the words come to me that day. It said, uh, it says that he saw the savior who reached out his hand and said, just because you had a drink, son, don't make you a bad man. And uh, then as I stepped up to take a closer look, there, I looked on the back seat, there was an old familiar book. It was the Bible that looked like he'd been, it had been around, but I hope that he read it because it's six feet now. And it was just, the Bible was on the back seat. After I had wrote that, my son told me, he said, do you do know that that Bible's up on the seat? And I didn't know anything about that. So it's pretty. That's, it, a, that's, a, that's uh, a lot of life. That's a lot. The only thing it wasn't burnt, by the way. And any, yeah. any record driver you'll ever talk to will tell you the same thing. The Bible never gets hurt. So they can believe what they want to believe. And I don't care what you believe, but I'm just telling you what happened. And it, it never gets burnt or it never gets destroyed. And all the record drivers you'll talk to, ask them about it. They'll say, have you ever seen a Bible get torn up in a car wreck? This don't happen. But but anyway, yeah, but uh, I pull cars out of ditches. and um, But hopefully uh, things are kind of picking up. And I hope to where I don't have to do that a whole lot too much more. I'm getting oh, man, I, I'm getting I don't want to talk on too much, but I love your stories. That Thanks for sharing all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll rattle on too much. Nah, that we're having a good time. We're having a good time. Hey, man, play on. What do you got? I want, I'm, I'm waiting to hear this. Uh, you know, um, last time I was here, I did the song. I don't know. Uh, the Redemption Ain't Something. I cut it in Muscle Shows for the PTSD, first responders. I don't know. Yeah, if I remember I, it. I really didn't do it. Too, too. I'll try it again if you want to hear that. Or I'll do I something. would love to. I love that song. Okay. Uh, I go in the studio, by the in case I forget, June the 1st, I'll be in Muscle Shows working on the new record, so that's, that's a different deal. Great. My stuff. She called me a loser, a pill-popping boozer, but she don't have these nightmares rolling round in her head. So early this morning, I packed without warning, and I left her sleeping. Alone in our bed. So when my demons get restless. I head back to Texas, and if I leave tomorrow, that's one day too late, yeah, my demons get restless, I head back to Texas, and if I, redemption ain't something, I find along the way. See, she wants church on Sunday, a big house and kids someday. With the white picket fences, like a sweet mama has. But my world is in shambles. See my souls in shackles And there's no more green pastures All I see is sand So when my demons get restless See I head back to Texas Girl, and if I leave tomorrow, girl, that's one day too late. 
Yeah, my demons get restless. I head back to Texas. And redemption ain't something. Girl, I found along the way. Yeah, redemption ain't something. I find along the way. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great words, great song. Thank you so very, very much. I appreciate that. I hope that some people get some good out of it, man. I really do. Um, I like it. I like it. But uh, yeah. But yeah, um, looking forward to June the 1st to go in and see what we can come up with. You know, um, um, just uh, I need to have a record, man. I need to. It's been too long. It's been like six or seven years. And but I've been trying to get back healthy. And thanks to y'all for bearing and putting up with me through my rehabilitation here from COVID-19. So, yeah, thanks. Had a rough go of it. Very rough go. Nine days. and like to kick out. So y'all like to lost. But I was like one of the very first uh, cases in Mississippi. Oh my gosh. And then they asked me, well, have you been vaccinated? I said, it's amazing how I was the very first case or one of them. And they told me what to do then, but they won't tell me where I get that shot very first line. So I'm just going to go and I, I can get it now, but it's getting more, but um, it's been a challenge to get it right now. We're having a gasoline problem, but besides that, you know, um, we're we're hanging. We're, it's all good, man. Good, it's, good. Yeah, it's uh, but um, this song. I don't know. Did you ever hear? Um, well, I tell you what, I could do something a little bit more pop and hill country uh, that I did <clears throat> years ago called Juke Joint Jumping. If you want to hear something like that, sure, sure. Yeah. It's your choice, man. We just want to hear what you want to do. All right, well, bet. this years ago baby you know I just got off work honey and the boss he been talking real mean to me I got my little paycheck girl I'm ready to pick you up you know what we gonna do honey we're going to John jumping Call whiskey dragon tonight. See, baby, I want you to put on that little red dress. You know the one I love. I'm gonna stop by the bootlegger's house, get some of that good corn whiskey. We be ready to go, girl. Baby, we'll go to John jumping. Call whiskey drinking tonight. Yeah. We're going to John jumping, baby. Call whiskey drinking tonight. Isn't that right? See, if you ain't never been down to a juke in Mississippi, you might be scared to come inside. But once you get in there, you're going to find out you got a lot of brand new friends. See, they're dancing belly to belly. Baby, and cheek to cheek. When the fifth sit hits the air, baby. Of course, there'll be corn whiskey everywhere. That's when you know, baby. Would you join jumping, honey? Cold whiskey dragon night. That's right. in the morning and I know you 
your daddy going to be real mad at me. I'm going to chop you down the road, baby. Pick it up back next week. You know what we're going to do, honey? Baby, we're going to shoot your hunch of him. Cold whiskey drink in the night. Yeah, baby, now chew your hunch of him. Cold whiskey drink in the night. If I was in Pennsylvania, we'd be what? We'd be chew your hunch of him. Cold whiskey drinking. Mm, baby, tonight. Yeah, great song. You wrote that? That's great. I'm going to get in a warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> that little bit of hand jive type thing rhythm going on there. So Yeah, a little of Bo Diddley thing kind of going, you know? Yeah. yeah. Dig it, dig it. So you, you're you the front man for the Delta Blues Boys also? No, I'm not, I don't know who they are. Who are they? You, the Delta Blues Boys. That's On my notes, that's what they have. Yeah, I got my notes wrong. That's all right. That's okay. Where are they from? Uh, Hill Country Blues Band. Fronting the Delta Blues. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to check our uh, producer on that one. So. <laughs> but I, I, I can tell you where I live at. I live about twenty three miles from Holly Springs. I'm about eight miles from Arthur Turner, okay. and uh, I'm about. Six, I'm probably six miles from where Mississippi Fred McDowell is buried, Napoleon Strickland, Jesse May Hillfield. So I'm a hill, I, but I never have been considered a hill country guy, and I've lived here my whole life. And I'm not, and I'm just going to say this that um, I think it's because I didn't ride nobody's coattail. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be, I knew I could, like I tell these guys, I never, I found out when I met Junior Kimbrough and R.L. Burnside when I got out of Parchment Prison in 1993. His son was in prison with me, <coughs> David Malone Kimbrough. So I got the first licks that I ever was taught was Hill Country. and But I knew when I heard it how special it was. And no disrespect to anybody out there, but there's no way they're going to be able to mimic it. There's no way you're going to be able to get it. if Unless you or them, there's absolutely, you can get close to it. You can do it all you want to do. So I knew, I talked to Kenny Kimbrough the other day about it. And I said, you know, Hill Country Picnic, I've never been invited to. All of my friends are on it. And that's fine. It makes no difference to me. But I am a Hill Country guy. He said, yes, you are. He said, you was around my dad. You was around R.L. Burnside, just like everybody else was. I said, yeah. When I met your dad, um, he asked me two things. He asked me, uh, was I, uh, well, there's women on here. But anyway, he, had, he asked me one question about women. And then he asked me, <laughs> and I said, not near about enough. That's all I'm going to say on that one. And then uh, then he's, I said, I got to ask you. I said, you know, I play country in Parchment Farm. You know, I had to sing country songs, Merle Haggard and stuff like that. I said, man, I love the blues. So he said, can you do them both? I said, well, pretty much, yeah, to a certain extent. I can't do your stuff as good as nothing like you. And it's just, you know, and he said, well, do them both. And when you get it down, you'll have your own style, Mark. And that's kind of what I, you know, I love singing ballads. I love singing pretty songs. Um, but, it, you know, it's amazing how uh, everybody, because I do the style that I do, that all oh, marks up maybe hill country, but it may be because, you know, like a lot of times they can't do what I do. You know, you, you can't come over and do that. So automatic, you're going to alienate me and put me in a box with I'm not in the box. I mean, I can turn around and uh, like this song I wrote about my personal farm experience called Dusty Rose. Well, I'm walking down this dusty road, oh yeah. Walking down a dusty road Thought I'm broken, I'm hungry And I don't know which way to go I got Jesus, Jesus on my mind Oh yeah 
I got Jesus on my mind. I said, Lord, have pity for those that give me all this time. I said, my baby, my baby, she loved me. Oh, yeah. Say, my baby, she loved me. I said, when we're free, we'll be together for eternity. So I'm walking down a dusty road. Oh, yeah. Walking down a dusty road. Lord, I'm broken, I'm hungry, and I don't know which way to go. I got shackles, shackles all on me. This first one, isn't it? I got shackles all on me. I said, Lord, have pity. Lord, would you set me free? So I'm walking down this dusty road. Oh, yeah. Walking down a dusty road. I said, Lord, broken the door, no. Do it again, man. And I'm walking down a dusty road. Oh, yeah. Walking down a dusty road. Said I'm broken, I'm hungry, and I don't know which way to go. Said I'm broken, I'm hungry, and I don't know which way to go. Said I'm broken, I'm hungry, and I don't know which way to go. I wrote that years ago. Oh, I love it. Thank you. About my parchment experience, and my nephew just brought it up to me. That he said, "Did you write that?" I said, "Yeah, I did." I said, "It was," a, but I left out the part about shackles. It was a, about my story of parchment farm. But yeah, I was, I was hungry, and I didn't know which way to go at that moment. And um, thank God they had the prison band, and this guy heard me singing, and uh, now um, this uh, it's just wonderful. I do the I do a, a parchment blues trail marker. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning to try to do the narration of those things. So if you go up to a marker with a, the app, it'll start talking. You're standing in front of Hank, whatever, you know, da, 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 da. Well, I hope to be the guy that you'll be hearing when you me, Bobby Rush and some other guys. So um, God's good. God's good. So I'm not worried about, man, hey, David Kimbrough, like I said, he... All day long, y'all. Grew up doing it. Grew up doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I know that I would never be as good as them, so I had to figure out what I could do. And that's what I told Kenny Kimbrough the other day. He said, well, I got a song I sure want you to sing. So me and him's talking about going to muscle shows and doing some songs that actually Junior had written that has never been put out. And so... Wow. Wouldn't that be an honor? Because he come to me to ask me to sing them. So um, he said, I'd love for you to do some songs that Daddy never released. And so it, I think that's an example of, uh, you know, it don't get no better than that. No, that's for sure. That's but that, that, that is you know, an honor just to be asked. Heck yeah. But me and Kenny, like, he come over to my party one time. We had this trough, this horse trough full of beer. He has on a white, beautiful jumpsuit and somehow we was wrestling or me and somebody and we pushed Kenny backwards by accident and he fell off into the trough of beer just somehow completely booty first submerged under it under all of this beer and I said he's gonna come up swinging you know this suit he and he come up that told me how Kenny was he just come up laughing and he said, oh, man. And when he did, we all jerked him out. My mama was there alive then. And, but um, he's just a great, great, great guy. Kenny, Kenny and David. And when I heard David singing and um, trying to make it over, make it over. Lord, I'm trying. You know, and I'm like, man, that's what I want. To do. He's singing this out of lunchroom uh, closet, recording it, sending it back to Fat Possum who was just starting out at the time. And that's how far I'm going back when Fat Possum just started. And they come to Clark, I mean, come to Parchman and recorded David. And when he did, I got the dog in me, that, that song, uh, I was the background singer. So wow. when, when you hear, I got the dog in me, I got the dog in me, it's me and two other guys, Mitch Pendleton and, and uh, uh, Lenny Steed. And, but I never got credit and put my name on it. Uh, but that was okay. But I, that was my 
first time to uh, to be on a record, and it was David Kimbrough's. Uh, he got into it or something down there with that possum, and they left early in the in the session after several days. I don't know what happened, but David got upset, and uh, or they got upset, and it went on. And then later on, I don't know if the record really got you know released like it really should have, but. David, uh, David had a, his voice was what I like. David singing is really what I, what I was, um, what really pulled me into David. And uh, of course, he's like a brother to me. And he just, when he died, it was uh, what a loss. You're, you're, you're blessed and lucky to be there and, and meet and talk and, and work with those people. Uh, I'm up here north and I don't want this. To... But I learned that and I learned it just note for note, like Robert Johnson might have played it. And but it just it just don't make it, you know. And and it's been a long it's been a long search. Uh, um, and I'm still not even close, but but it's it's all in the journey. But you're right there in the middle of that. That man, that, that's incredible. I don't envy you, Parchment Farm. <laughs> But but those people, it was, you know, um, today when I buried my coach about a year ago, I was able to tell him how much I, he meant to me at a um, Easter uh, thing at, at, after church. We all went over to this restaurant, soul food, and he was eating. I said, that goes to Bert. And I ain't seen him in years. And I said, I got to tell him what's on my mind. So I get up and I go over to him and I said, Coach Bert, I said, Mark Massey, he, he looks up to me, goes, mule man. And when he said that, I mean, you got to know this guy. He's like Coach Bear Bryant. I mean, he 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 was ruthless, but he was fair. Yeah. He, he demanded discipline. He demanded it, you know. And it was just that. And I had a rough thing going on at home, and uh, a brothers and all that kind of junk. So when I got to Senatobia, where they won football games, and this coach was the the deal. My brother was in trouble every day at school, and he never judged me. He never treated me like him. He treated me as if you know, whatever you do is how I'm going to treat you. And, and that, and, uh, today to find out all the, when he knew my name is, oh man, I said, Oh me, I was embarrassed in a way, but he said, you're doing good. You're doing good. And he, that meant so much to me. Like I told his son today that played football with me, David, I said, David, that meant when he called me mule, man, that was just meant so much to me. He said, he really thought a lot about you. Mark. And, uh, so, um, but you know these doors are closing, my friend, and more will open. And uh, so, yeah, I was blessed, man. I, I mean, I truly believe that. Um, you know, my dad when he took me around as a young kid, he he shot dice, and uh, he was a hustler, my daddy. And so he would take me to these joints and clubs. There'd be no other white people at, but my dad had a relationship with these people and gambling and whatever. And he would bring me in to the club. All I can remember was, uh, I want to tell this, but I don't want nobody to take my idea. <laughs> but when I pulled up to the club in the back of an old pickup truck with a bulldog that he probably had fought at some point that day, it was my dog and I loved, but you know, he gambled on him and he won, but then he would take me to the club. And as long as I don't tell what we, what's going on, he'd buy me candy and, ice cream and stuff. going down the road eating ice cream going down the cheek but he pulled up to this one joke at, and this is where i think the crossroads is hank i think i they can say what they want to say but ain't it amazing that he talks about tell my friend willie brown in that song right right if you go to pritchard mississippi pritchard there was all joints right along that railroad track when i was a kid bad bad joke joints where folks got killed and right there on the other side of them juke joints is a four-way crossroad. And where's Willie Brown? 200, 300 yards at a church right there. So it seemed like it could be there. You know what I'm saying? Not disrespect. I don't know now. I'm just telling you. It's worth investigating. Go to Pritchard, Mississippi. Look at that crossroads. Look across the ditch at the Coldwater River. There's an old church that's abandoned. I had just happened to ride by there looking for a place where me and my daddy used to put the boat in. And I told this guy, I said, one day I'm going to go down that road. We was going back to eat at the casino. This young guy was driving me. And um, he said, let's go today. He just hit his brakes all of a sudden. And he turned around. I said, well, yeah, let's go. 
So he turned around and we go down this road and we get back there at this church. He said, I'm going to walk back here and uh, um, behind the, the church and look around or something. And I was using the restroom right there. And I said, well, I just follow him around there. And when I walked around this abandoned church, it's falling in. I can send you the pictures. There's a big, pretty monument. It says King of the Blues or whatever, Willie Brown. And I'm like, it just gave me chills, man, that I had found this like I did. And then that's when I'm thinking, man, I don't know about the crossroads being down yonder. It may be because he speaks of Robinsonville. He talks about Tunica. He dated women from Tunica. Robert Johnson did. So after I saw Willie Brown and that, that monument that they had put up, someone, the Blues Society people had done that. Right. And I knew right then, I said, oh, no. I don't know. You know, this is something to, this is something to think about. We'll never know, probably. But uh, but uh, yeah, I'm very fortunate to be right where I'm at. And uh, I'm fortunate to uh, to have been around them cats. I'm, I'm glad my dad took me and put me um, uh, in the positions that made me feel uncomfortable around these guys. But, man, they were they were awesome players that he took. I got to see. Furry Lewis, I got to see Lightning Hopkins. I got to see some of the baddest of the baddest as a kid, you know. That's incredible. Yeah. You got, let's let's do one more here. Yeah. All right. Mr. Albert King. Lay around home alone. Girl on a rainy night like this. Baby, I'm starving for your love. Hungry for just one kiss. Every raindrop I hear, girl, against my window pane. Baby, it be so loud and clear. One dispelled your name. Hey, yeah, got no one to turn to. I'm so tired of being alone. I feel like breaking up somebody's home. I know it's useless, honey, hanging on where you belong to someone else. I couldn't control the vibration. Baby, after all, couldn't help myself. Hey, yeah. Got no one to turn to. I'm so tired of being alone. I feel like breaking up somebody's home. See, last night I cried so hard. Baby, I believe I caught a chill. couldn't control the vibration girl the way you made me feel hey yeah got no one to turn to i'm so tired of being alone i feel like bringing up somebody's home hey yeah got no one to turn to i'm so tired of being alone i feel like bringing up somebody's home Simon done broke up my home. Watch out, Simon. Breaking up somebody's home. Breaking up somebody's home. You know what Johnny said? Taylor said, said, better when you're stealing it. What did Johnny Taylor say? Said it's cheaper to keep it. <laughs> Hang a breaking up somebody's home. Don't do it, Hank. Somebody's
Digging that, man. Albert King, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hank, for having me. Thank you so very, very much. You going to, come on, you going to do one more. I'll be glad to. Yeah. yeah I'll do, do one more. We got uh, Bill Wable coming up next. Okay. Well, uh, plastic flowers, Mark. Okay. Give me some plastic flowers. I got you, baby. I hear you. Right. Trying to get it right. But now you're telling me it's time to go. But before you lay me down in that cold, cold ground, there's something I won't ever want to know. What is it? Baby, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. And no matter how much money you can save, and make sure that my tombstone it ain't made of styrofoam, girl. Don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. Baby, accept no substitute, honey. Like phone and mohair suits. And make Rolex watches made in Tokyo. No. Imitation diamond rings. We got instant everything. Just remember all that glitter show ain't gold. No, it ain't. Baby, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. No matter how much money you can save. Girl, and make sure that my tombstone, it ain't made of styrofoam. Girl, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. See, Hank, I don't want to ride on sheets of naga hide in a little limousine made in Japan. Y'all throw me in the back of old Red's black Cadillac and never bought it. Now please, please understand. Y'all sing it with me. Baby, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. Yeah, no matter how much money you can save. Make sure that my tombstone, it ain't made of styrofoam, girl. Put no plastic flowers on my grave. Baby, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. No matter how much money you can save. Girl, to make sure that my tombstone, it ain't made of styrofoam. Girl, don't put no plastic flowers on my grave. Oh, boy, y'all, baby, don't put no plastic. I can't hear you. You better tell your significant other right now. Yeah. But tell them, make sure that my tombstone, it ain't made of styrofoam, girl. Put no plastic flowers. And in Mississippi, y'all gotta go. Gray, yeah, yeah. I said, baby, you get to hurt and go, baby, don't make me haunt you, honey. That's quite a workout. Oh, shoot. Hey, I do it all day for you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I play it. So we got, uh, don't forget, I'm talking to everybody out there. And when this goes out on uh, um, tomorrow, uh, the, the video, uh, get down to the store. Where can we get your CDs? One Step Ahead of the Blues, Mississippi Lockdown. iTunes, CD Baby. Um, that kind of deal, yeah. Okay. Or reach out to me personally if you want to. Um, <clears throat> if you want to reach out to me on Facebook, Mark Muleman Massey, I'll send you one. Hey, I'll send you two for the price of one, maybe, and sign it. Just you know, uh, uh, just just get in touch with me, man. It, like I said again, I'm excited about um, coming on with the uh, the new one. Um, uh, it's it's going to be. Um, um, if you had, like I said, the, the one that I wrote for my wife is really good. How could she forgive me? I think it's more like a William Bell, you know, style, you know, um, deal. So I'm excited about that one and some other ones that, uh, that I've been writing that's come along, man, you know, uh, um, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Billy Lawson over there, this relationship we've got now, we did the Christmas song, something in your stocking. 
And then, um, then the, the Redemption Ain't Something, the PDSD song, which is kind of two things that was out of my normal realm or whatever the word would be, you know. So I like doing that because it throws me kind of like what I'm going to do in the morning, narrating things like I've never done. You know, I like things that challenge me. And so now that I can go in and I can do something that, that I've written that I feel really comfortable with, I just can't. I can't wait to see what the product's going to be on something that I felt comfortable, comfortable with. You know, if these turned out pretty good, like they're saying, everybody, T. Graham Brown heard it. Um, some other people, the country singers have heard me and, you know, um, comparing me to Deborah Clinton, in a, you know, and, and you know, great, man. It's yeah, just, I can I can hear Delbert in there. I can big influence, huge influence, you know. Yeah. Oh, I love the man. I love the man. Good of course. guy. Yeah, he's got that song, um, Why, Why Me? You know, yep. one of my favorites. Yep. Pretty, uh, well, boy. thanks, Mark. Man, I know you're rushing around, and I know you just came from an important in your life funeral. And, and if there's a message, and I think you'll agree with, if there's somebody in your life that's affected you, give them a call, write them a letter. If you see them in a restaurant, stop them and tell them. It'll make you feel good. It'll make them feel good. Can I leave you on this one thing since you said that? I got to do this and uh, because you're right. What if today was your last day? How would, yeah, man. how would you act if today was your last day was what the preacher always said when we got, if today was your last day, how would you live? So, so how would you live if today was your last day? Would you run and play or go running back to a place you lived as a child to reminisce for a while of the things you did as a kid? It's so easy to tell someone that you know just how they feel when you don't. How could you know just how they feel when time's caught up with them? They're looking at the end. They can see the end. So how would you live if today was it or just a few months to live? Now would you keep smiling or would you go to a place to be alone? Would you even want to talk on the phone? When you get the news To the ones that you love The baby will grow Up to know just who you were By the stories you told Not so long ago Before you were gone So if I don't get to see you anymore, no deep in my heart, you'll live there evermore, so now, goodbye's just not the word. How sweet, wonderful.
Thank you for having me. Thank y'all for having me. I don't. I'm sorry I was tardy, and um, I can see <laughs> that you. <laughs> it's a blue society. We don't care. <laughs> hey, well, you're like like family to me. You've been so good to me, and uh, even right after my sickness, you've always welcomed me with welcome ar with your arms open. And so, um, again, thank you so very very much for having me. Well.